Welcome to Your Questions Answered. You've been sending in your questions about the COVID local restriction tiers. So here to try and answer some of them is Professor of Medicine at the University of East Anglia, Paul Hunter, as always. Really good to have you on. Lots and lots of questions given uh, what Quite we've been good. hearing today. Hello. Uh, let's start off. Let's get cracking with Louise from Bristol, who is asking, are we able to leave Bristol, which is in tier three, to bring our son back from university in Swansea next week? I think a lot of parents are going to be asking this. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I've, I've actually spent some time trying to read through the documents today to answer this question. It's not absolutely clear, but you can leave uh, a tier three area for educational purposes. And to me, going to pick your son up from university counts as an educational purpose. So in your position, I would certainly go and pick up my son from uh, from university. But it doesn't say that explicitly in the rules. Oh, how that's I'm sure Louise will be pleased to hear that and how lovely of her for offering to uh, pick her son up. So, uh, yeah, that, that's good. Paul Collins, also in Bristol, actually, um, Paul is asking, will students be tested before they're allowed to return to university after their Christmas break? And he asks, if not, why not? Um, I'm not absolutely sure that, to this, uh, the answer to this question. I've, I've heard it suggested, but I've not seen it written down that that's what's going to be uh, re required or recommended. I think it, whilst they're all in university and my own university, we, we're, we've got really good plans and it's going to be easy to us to swab, uh, to get samples and help the students get samples before they go home for the Christmas break. When they're dispersed all around the country, it's going to actually be quite difficult to achieve that. So um, I suspect uh, that they won't, but I don't know for certain. So just in terms of the University of East Anglia then, so from your point of view, will, will your students be tested? On the way, um, before they go home, absolutely. Um, I think we're still waiting to uh, see what the guidance is about uh, when students return. I think what we will do probably, but I don't can't say this for certain, is do something similar to what we did at the start and make it easy for students who have got worries or who have symptoms to be tested. But I don't think we will be doing routine asymptomatic screening um, uh, as as is the case, as um, like is being done at Liverpool at the moment. But that may well change over the course of this month. This is a very rapidly moving situation. Yes, of course. And sorry to put you on the spot there, but that's um, just interesting to get it from your point of view from uh, your university. Let's go to Elliot in Essex. Is there really any point in reviewing the local restrictions in two weeks' time just before they're lifted for Christmas? That's this review uh, on the 16th of December that the government yeah. announced. Yeah, um, I... <laughs> I must admit, I, I, I think there probably isn't. I think it's going to be difficult to lift restrictions before Christmas. Um, and I would be very surprised personally, although I don't know, I'd be very surprised if there were substantial restrictions this side of the Christmas uh, break. Um, I think after Christmas, once we've um, gone two, three weeks after the Christmas break and we're back, I think then the two week uh, review will probably happen. And I hope and I suspect that many uh, authorities currently in tier th three might then actually be able to move into tier two. But we will have to wait till January to see for certain. And just, uh, well, a lot of Christmas questions, actually, but just, just that point, that period during Christmas where the tiers are lifted, is that right? Am I... Yeah, um, that's my understanding. And it must be said, this... this um, Reduction in restrictions over Christmas is very limited. You're only allowed to have three households in your bubble or your Christmas bubble, possibly bauble. Um, and, and that is still actually really quite restrictive. We're trying to work it out with our own family. We've got two sons, each with their families and their partners have got uh, their own uh, families. And it's actually really difficult trying to work this out. So, um, yes, restrictions... Um, are pretty much going to be uniform over the country, uh, I suspect. But um, again, I'm not 100% sure we will hopefully see more guidance and see how it works out. But at the moment, it's still early days, and I think we're still trying to get our heads around some of the uh, 
the minutiae of what we are and are not allowed to do. Yes, well, I'm, I'm, yeah, and again, it's, it's, it's a tricky one, but thank you. Uh, Debbie, and I can't believe you said uh, bauble. There you go. Debbie in Lincolnshire. My son lives in London. He is due to come home from Christmas, uh, for Christmas from the 23rd until the 27th, so London to Lincolnshire. Can he stay until New Year if he chooses to bubble, and I'm not going to say bauble, with us before returning to London in the New Year? So can he stay longer? Yeah. Well, there's... Um... Uh, if he's a student, then there isn't a problem. If he's not a student, then he may be able to bubble and form a support bubble. But um, does he live alone in London? Um, and um, are uh, you, uh, the lady uh, asking those questions, uh, is she in a single household or is, she, is, is there... Um, a uh, child under one or a, dis a disabled child under five. There are all these other issues to be involved, but I think if you're not going to form a exclusive bubble that will remain throughout the period, then probably he will have to go back on the, at the end of the Christmas hiatus and not stay till New Year at the moment. So, Debbie, you're giving Debbie permission to ask her son lots of questions about his private life. That's great. Um, but just the difference. So the difference, a student is by default going back to a bubble within his. And Correct. A, a non-student would be going back to a workplace and therefore more out in the open, I'm assuming. Yeah. I, and, and I think it, it's because that realistically university breaks over Christmas are for maybe five weeks. And. Uh, and you don't want loads of students going back to university with nothing to do for three weeks. Um, uh, and they're better and more safely managed in their own families. And um, But if you've got a job and you're going back to work and you are going to be around, particularly if you're in a household with multiple occupancy, it becomes, you cannot realistically form a bubble with your um, family back home unless you fill, fulfill one of the criteria of, of uh, forming a bubble. OK. Um, Tim Haig in Helston in Cornwall is going to ask a question that's going to get a lot of people really riled. I'm not a business owner, uh, and he's in Cornwall just to stress. I'm not a business yeah. owner, but would like to know how the government will stop second homeowners coming down from tier two and three areas, bringing the virus with them. Well, the first thing to say is that Tier three, people whose main home is in tier three should not uh, move around the country um, with, the poss with the only really exception of the, the Christmas break and if they are moving for certain circumstances such as education, work, um, attending funerals, that sort of thing. Tier two people can move around the country uh, if they so wish, uh, providing that when they do move uh, somewhere else, they don't then move, uh, spend time overnight with people who aren't in their bubble. So uh, tier two people can, as I understand it, realistically come down to Cornwall if that is what they want. Tier three people, uh, that is against the rules. But I don't know how that's going to be policed, if at all. Yes, that's the, the. I'm not sure Tim was going to like that answer, but uh, thank you. Uh, Mary Marshall in Ilkley is asking: Is there a limit to them to the number of members in three families who can meet at Christmas? And if so, do children under twelve count in that number? Um, I don't believe there is a limit. I've looked very carefully through the documents, and I can't find that. Um, uh, so the question about whether children are included is 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 uh, is uh, doesn't need to be answered. But what I would say is that the more people you have round, the more difficult it is to socially distance and to manage that risk within a household. So yeah, you know, if if you are, if you have three households with um, uh, you know, ten people in each household, it will get very um, difficult to manage that safely, but there will be probably be very few people who have that sort of size in in three separate households coming to bubble in the country. I I, just, I believe.
Yeah, good to, good to stress that even when you do go into that bubble, you still have yes. to be careful. Uh, Laura Castleford Absolutely. is uh, saying that she lives in a tier three. In tier three, uh, she's been invited to a family wedding in another tier three area, a hundred miles away. Am I allowed to travel to attend? It doesn't say whether on um, public transport or pro in a private car, though. Um, it, I, I think so. I think the the rules are that you can attend wedding receptions in tier three. Uh, what I, what you're not allowed to do in tier three is have a wedding reception. You're allowed to go to the marriage service, but you're not allowed to have a reception in tier three. Right. Well, congratulations to the bride and groom. Laura, do pass that on from us here. Um, Tim Knight in Clown. I hope I pronounced that properly. Uh, I live alone. I have a carpet due to be fitted on the 4th of December. Can this still happen? Uh, I, yes, uh, trades people are allowed to still work in uh, people's homes, uh, electricians um, and so on, uh, providing that they do that in a COVID safe way, that they're wearing appropriate PPE and that um, uh, they are careful when they are in the property. So uh, the answer to that is, is, um, is yes, they are allowed to, uh, to, to do that work. And uh, let's have a last one from Jessica Clark in Nottingham. In the new tier system, can hotels provide accommodation for people attending or organising funerals like they could before? Um, well, I don't think anything's going to be like they could before for a, a while yet. But um, basically, hotels in tier three areas must close unless they are providing um, accommodation, and the words are, I, I will actually, if I can find it, tell you the exact words. Um, if you are providing accommodation for people who are there for work or if they cannot um, travel home. So if you go to the funeral and it is too late for you to then travel home, then um, yes, you can stay in a hotel and a hotel can be uh, in business. Um, it would be, um, I don't know how easy it will be to find hotels in the area that you're hoping that the funeral will be that will still be open. So um, you might have some difficulty in trying to track down one, but it, as far as I can tell reading the uh, documentation, uh, you could, if you could not get, if you could not reasonably get home after the, um, after the funeral. Yes, it's a, a sad note on which to end, but we really appreciate your expertise and for looking through the, uh, the, the fine details so that we, we didn't have to, basically. Professor Paul Hunter from the University My of friend. East Anglia, thank you so much. And just to stress, we do have a postcode checker if you want to find out what postcode, what tier you're in on our website.